really can be. And, uh, you know, we're hoping our depth is a big factor in our season, and we're excited about that because, you know, injuries and things happen during the season. And now we've had some guys that have actually been on the field live and, and been accountable for, for game situations. And I think at, at all positions across the board, it's going to give us a lot more depth and really starting to develop us back into a program. And uh, that's the thing that's got me very excited. Right here, middle of the floor. I think we feel very good about it. I think, you know, it's the third year of our program. You know, I think everybody talks about expectations. I think you break them down. You're, you have expectations, one, because you have talent. Well, we, I think we do have talent. I think we have some big, fast guys. I think, two, is knowledge of what to do and, and the understanding of how to do it. But I think, three, and more importantly, is the day-to-day -day routine and the small details and the habits in which you create. And I think that comes from the leadership on your team. A coach can only push it so far. I think the leadership of the team and when the guys are there that we aren't there, I think, and then filtering that down to the young guys because it's going to be important for them to grasp that very early. And I think from a leadership standpoint, from our senior class and our junior class, that's being in our third year. And them knowing, and being in our third year, knowing what we expect, the way we want things done, and how we want things done. I think from that standpoint, it's really going to benefit us, and I feel very good about us going into the season. Back of the room. Lane Hurt, Seminoles.com again. Coach, uh, EJ yesterday talked about uh, how his relationship with his offensive line has, has grown, not just on the field, but off the field. Mm -hmm. How important is that relationship with the quarterback offensive line off the field? I, I, it's very because, you know, those guys have to take a personal pride that – He's their baby. It's like it's like a, it's like a mama. You don't want, you don't want no one to touch your baby. I think that offensive line has to feel that. And I think when they like the guy and respect the guy that's back there, in which they do because they know how how competitive he is, had the toughness he plays with, but also the respect he has for them as players and understanding how tough their job is. I think EJ. That's just another sign of how mature EJ is and understanding the big picture of who he is as our quarterback. EJ says that he's one hundred percent. Yes. Do you agree? Yes, I definitely do. I mean, you know, he had the shoulder last year in the third game, which lingered all year. And then, I, as people realize, the second half of the Notre Dame game, he played with a broken leg. And I still that still bothered him actually through spring. So he's fully healthy and we're expecting a good year. Social media has been opened up to ask some questions, and we've got one coming in from this side of the room. Every year there seems to be a lot of breakout players. Who are some of the names you think we should watch out for this year? Uh, from, our, from our football team? I hope there's a bunch of them. <laughs> Uh, you know, there, there's some young guys that are very talented. But, I, I, you know, I think there's some old guys, I think. You know, I think Rashad Green will come back. I think he's got Devontae Freeman getting Chris Thompson back, though. You know, getting him back. I mean, Rodney Smith, I think Nick O'Leary has a chance. I think on defense, you know, you still know about our front guys. I think Ant McLeod's one of those guys. But I think, you know, Terrence Brooks is a new guy. Greg Reed, Xavier Rhodes. But you all know about them. I think Carlos Williams could be a guy that, that gets involved in that. And I think we got some outstanding freshmen, which I have not seen yet, that will have a chance to uh, jump on that mix. James Wilder is another guy on offense that comes to mind along with some of those linemen. So from that standpoint, I think all those guys for young. Kelvin Benjamin's one. You know, he, he's a big, strong receiver that I'm anxious to see. Had a very good spring. If he can carry it over into the fall. There's, there's quite a few guys in that list that have the potential to be. And I said, I'm hoping I'm up here talking about a lot of them for a long time. Back of the room this side. Jamie Ricks, News 14 Carolina. Coach, can you uh, just speak on the big story of the day uh, taking place with Penn State and now – your former boss, mentor, or what have you, now being the official leader of all-time wins in college football? Well, I, I know I, I can't speak for Coach Bowden, but I, I'll promise you this, knowing him, he would not have wanted to get it this way. Uh, I think his, his thoughts, and just like my thoughts and prayers, are with the victims of the, the Penn State situation. I think that's where they need to be. And, you know, and, our, and, and President Emmert also obviously come down with some unprecedented penalties we haven't seen in a long time, maybe ever. But I, I know President Emmert very well, and I, I know he's a guy who does due diligence for everything he does. He must have a lot of information I'm not privileged to and I don't want to be privileged to. And uh, to make a good decision like that, or make a big decision like that and, and what happens. So, you know, it, it's just a tragedy all the way across the board. And, and, you know, hopefully we can move past it for the victims at Penn State. Our next two questions will come from this part of the room. Jeff Gravely, WRL-TV. Coach, yesterday we were talking to Brandon and EJ. The question was, do you believe Florida State should be in the conversation as a national championship contender? Both of them, without hesitation, said yes. What about their coach? Most definitely. I really do. I, I think we're there. I think, And part of being there, I think, is believing you belong there. 
I, I think that's a huge part of it. And I don't think there's any doubt. I think the confidence level of our guys, the experience of our guys, I'm extremely anxious to get to practice. Sometimes this year I'm saying, well, give me another week. Give me, have me have one more. I'm, I'm ready to practice. Uh, you and McCreeth with Herb FM Radio. Coach Fisher, uh, you know, we touched a little bit about um, EJ's physical, you know, the beating he took last year. Mm -hmm. He likes to move outside the pocket. I have a two-part question for you. First, can you touch base a little bit about um, his backups, what you expect in your confidence level? And then to take Florida State to the next level, if you could, if there's one game, one part of EJ's game that you could tweak, make better, that he has to improve on, what would that be? Uh, from a backup standpoint, I thought Clint Trigger did a really nice job when he came in in the Oklahoma game, brought us back to a tie, almost had a chance to win that game. Uh, played a tremendous ball game at Clemson the next week. Had a, had a sort of 35-30 game and a uh, chance to win it. Uh, threw for 300 and some yards as, as a freshman. Uh, I, th I thought he had a very good spring. I thought Jacob Coker behind him is a very talented guy who's really pushing into that mode. He's a big athletic guy. And I think we brought two guys in with Jameis Winston and Sean McGuire that I think can be talented. So from that standpoint, we feel very good. Um, one point of EJ's game, uh, I think just trusting and anticipating. And I think that will come as we, you know, we block around him better. And I think that, you know, he gets used to those receivers. We played such a large number of receivers last year because of injury. And I think anticipation at times, making him the hesitancy to, to throw some balls at times, I think came from that. And I think him just trusting and, and being a, and anticipating much better will really improve his play. Back of the house. LaneHurtSeminoles.com again. Coach, can you uh, talk about, are you pleased with the, the reports that you've gotten for, uh, about the freshmen thus far? And, and talk about their size, because walking around, these guys look like upperclassmen, some of them. <laughs> you see them more than I do. <laughs> You're allowed to be around them. I can't be around them. But uh, I've bumped into them a couple times in the hallways. Uh, they're grown men. <laughs> There's some big jokers in there. There's no doubt. And, you know, the, the good thing about it, I haven't had their name come across my desk that, hey, they're missing class. They're missing workout. You know, we're not, it doesn't matter. But guys report to you that guys have act or they've had any kind of problems in the summer. This has probably been one of, some of the, one of the best groups we've ever had as freshmen just coming in. From reports, I get feedback from the academic wing of what's going on. That makes me very proud. Coach, does missing out on the ACC championship game last year, does it motivate the players? Does it motivate you and your staff? How do you take that experience and move forward? Well, I think it, it always is. I mean, if you're a competitor and you, you expect to win championships, you expect to win an ACC championship, a national championship, I think it definitely does. I mean, if that doesn't motivate you every year, uh, then I think you're, 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 you need, it's time to get out of it. Question from this side. Coach, ScottCodicSeminoles.com. Talk about versatility on your defense. Uh, I mean, it's, you always talk about how multiple you want to be, whether it's you know, moving a, a Jenkins to an outside linebacker sometimes, moving mm -hmm. Joyner around, Brooks around. What does that do to your team, especially when you, when you go into year three with Coach Stoops? I mean, how the kind of the different the different options I guess it gives you as a defense. Well, I think the knowledge uh, of of your defense for those guys makes it easier to do. And 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 I, and I think it's like war. I mean, if they know where you're at, they're going to blow you up. So I think you constantly, I mean, you have to be very good at what you do, and there's the base things in what you do, but you have to you have to be able to move around, give a different look, confuse a quarterback. I mean, you know, you can, whether you hit a quarterback and sack him, sometimes you can confuse him in coverage, make him hold it, get a sack, throw a pick. I mean, giving him different looks and being very multiple and not lying the blocking schemes, the different looks to come at you that way. So I, I think being multiple is, is – a big part of it. And when you can do it with the same guys on the field and they can do two or three different things and play corner or, or blitz and you don't mind the safety getting locked up in man coverage or a uh, defensive end standing up and dropping in pass coverage is, is a change. I think all those things are very critical. How important is it for the ACC to win the game, a big game, every game in terms of the national spotlight? I, I think it's very critical because I think it just gives you credibility. You know, we you know we we lost Oklahoma a year ago in a very in a big game. Now we were able to beat Florida and we were able to beat Notre Dame, which are big non-conference games, which are very big games. But I think any time your conference wins those games, it just gives you more credibility. Back of the room, Coach. I think I saw forty thousand turned out for your spring game. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of passion resonate with you? And you know, how did you feel? Oh, I think, I, think, I, think it's, I think it's great because I, I think it helps in every facet of the game. And, and I think for the fans, too, to go up and enjoy and see the young players and see them in a different mode when it's, it's not a game and you're not worried about winning and losing. You're really evaluating the kind of guys you have and have fun with it. But I think it sends a message about that football is important to your program. I mean, and, and, and to, excuse me, to your university. And it's not the whole university. It's just the largest window in which we are, are viewed. And we want to represent that very well. And we have a lot of people who are very passionate about that. This will be our last question right here in front. 
Coach, I asked Brandon this yesterday, but I'm anxious to hear your thoughts. You know, it just seems like every year in and year out, uh, the one constant is the, the defense, the dominating defense of the Seminoles. How are you able to maintain that consistency as opposed to some programs have good defenses one year and then the next year they're nowhere even close to the top 25? What do you base, you know, what, what's the cause of that consistency? Well, first of all, I think we do, you know, I think we had a great job coaching. I think we have a great defensive staff. Mark Stoops and the staff do a tremendous job. And I think we prioritize defense. I, I think defense is the one constant I believe in. I don't think you're ever a great team you're great on defense. You're never great on defense till you're great up front with defensive linemen. And I think constantly recruiting and putting an emphasis on those types of players and understanding, you know, you have to be, you have to score points and do that. But when you're great on defense, you're always in the game. And that's, that's a priority for us. And we're always trying to recognize those types of players.